I was watching F1 last weekend and I noticed something. A lot of F1 teams have brands on the side of their cars that I've never heard of before. And I know a lot of brands. McDonald's, O'Reilly's, Preparation H, Pepsid. As we all know, F1 has an infamous history of shady sponsors. So it got me thinking, how sketchy are F1 sponsors today? So who are these unfamiliar brands? And where do they get their millions from? In this episode, we're gonna take a deep dive into every weird or sketchy sponsor this season and investigate just how deep this iceberg goes. Put on some gloves, because we're gonna be counting a lot of dirty money. Maybe. Formula One is one of the most expensive sports in the world. Just one race car can cost between 12 to $15 million, and teams typically have at least three of them. In addition, running an F1 team costs hundreds of millions of dollars a season. So it's no surprise that teams in the past have engaged in some sketchy sponsorship deals to keep things afloat. Rich Energy, T-Minus, Essex, and Moneytron are all just a handful of sketchy brands that have infiltrated the sport in the past, leaving F1 teams with a hole in their yearly budget. But that's the past. I'm interested in the now. We compiled literally every F1 sponsor into one spreadsheet. Then we narrowed it down to companies we felt had a sketchy vibe. Turns out, there's a lot of brands out there that don't pass the vibe check, and some that sound weird that are actually perfectly fine. This is a chart that shows the number of sponsors in each industry across every F1 team in 2023. I was surprised to find that tech businesses make up the majority of F1 team sponsors, above even automotive industry sponsors. Within the tech sponsorships, I found some pretty weird companies I'd never heard of before. One example is Velocity Black, who just signed with Aston Martin in March. Their website describes that Velocity harnesses the power of artificial intelligence to quote, help people actualize the full potential of their lives. Velocity Black members get exclusive access to the team and drivers, VIP tickets, and invite to special events. Apparently, Velocity Black is the world's first, quote, conversational mobile commerce engine for the affluent consumer. So what does that all mean? Well, after poking around, I found that the phone app costs 2,800 bucks a year. And even if you wanna pay that amount, you first have to request an invitation to be granted a membership. Sounds kinda culty to be honest, but rich people need some mystery in their lives too. I'm gonna put this towards the clean end of the spectrum. Sounds somewhat harmless, kinda like a status symbol for rich people to have on their phone. Like that Ruby app that cost $1,000 back when the iPhone first dropped. Very timely reference. Despite the weird names like Splunk, Sprinkler, and Ebthru, the tech sponsors are for the most part legitimate. But there's one new industry in F1 that isn't as clean cut. Crypto. Not sure why I walked off set. My board is right here. I'm of course referring to F1 Mercedes ex-crypto sponsor FTX, a company that famously collapsed a few months ago after an insane scandal. Basically, FTX was gambling with investors' money. FTX took investors' money, put it into FTT Token, a coin that's barely traded, and routed it to their second company, Alameda Research. But the shadiness didn't stop there. Turns out the company's top execs transferred $3.2 billion into their personal accounts, spent $2.5 million on yachts, and purchased a combined 35 properties in the Bahamas worth $256 million. When news broke that this was happening, everyone tried to pull their money out and the company went bankrupt. And like I was saying, it's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Yeah, I don't think so. Oops. FTX now owes over $3 billion to creditors and hundreds of millions of dollars to customers, including AMG Mercedes. Thankfully for Mercedes, $15 million may just be a drop in the bucket, monetarily speaking. But the worst part is the damage this has done for their reputation as a team, right? Mercedes now has to contain this scandal and chase down the money they're owed. To add insult to injury in the hit F1 Netflix docuseries Drive to Survive, FTX logos are shown all over stadiums and Mercedes uniforms and cars, a lasting reminder of this once promising partnership that turns sour. I'm gonna rank FTX right near the top of the sketchiness rankings. Beyond Mercedes, the collapse of FTX has had a ripple effect on Formula One. 
Last season, nearly all F1 teams had a cryptocurrency sponsor. This season, though, four teams have dropped out of the crypto race, including Ferrari, who ended a $30 million deal with its crypto blockchain sponsor, Veles, in January. But crypto hasn't been all bad. Teams like Red Bull, Aston Martin, and everyone's favorite underdog Haas have even seen success with cryptocurrency sponsorships, but the fallout of FTX has definitely left many teams questioning the longevity of crypto and F1. That's great, Nolan, but I'm gonna pause you real quick. If you wanna know even more sketchy Formula One sponsors, check out the Donut Racing Show podcast. We just put out an episode about sketchy Formula One sponsors from the past. We go super in depth on them. Uh, if that sounds good to you, check out the Donut Racing Show. All right. Back to me. And it's not just teams receiving damage to their reputation due to sketchy sponsors, it's drivers too. And not just any drivers, I'm talking about two-time champion and F1's golden boy, Max Verstappen. Verstappen's longtime sponsor, Jumbo, has been caught in a money laundering scandal involving its CEO, Fritz Van Aert. Apparently, Van Aert was laundering money through, quote, real estate transactions and car dealerships. And hundreds of thousands of unexplained euros in cash were found in his home. Millions of euros have been seized as part of an ongoing case, and the CEO faces tax fraud charges. Jumbo has since cut ties with their ex-CEO and has investigated the case internally, but still retains their sponsorship with Verstappen. But what's unfortunate here is that Jumbo and Verstappen's relationship was once a symbol of the young Dutch wonder boy's story, an association that might be fading. All right, ranking Jumbo here, I think I'm gonna say middle to lower middle, right, right down here. Money laundering and bad reputations are one thing, but what about serious crimes? During my investigation, I also looked into F1 series sponsors. F1 as a series has four categories of sponsors, global partners, official partners, regional partners, and official providers. Within global partners, there were the usual suspects, Pirelli, DHL, and Rolex. But one that stuck out to me was MSC Cruises. MSC Cruises is a subsidiary of the Mediterranean Shipping Company, one of the biggest shipping companies in the world. After a little digging, I found out that they're in an ongoing legal battle over a $1 billion drug bust on one of their ships. MSC was caught with 20 tons of cocaine hidden in seven shipping containers. The company has denied any responsibility and has responded that it was a result of eight crew members who organized the operation independently. Sounds plausible. Illegal drug trafficking onboard container ships is not a problem exclusive to MSC, who by all accounts appear to be on the right track to detect and prevent crime on board their ships. But it's interesting to learn that logistics companies like MSC and DP World are connected with F1 and the ties that the shipping industry sometimes has the crime. Whatever's going on in the world of shipping companies, it hasn't stopped F1 from engaging in big business with that industry. It was employees, I wanna put this kind of down here below FTX, who were knowingly ripping people off. Our next offender puts into perspective just how interconnected F1 might be to one of the worst things imaginable, war. Ever since their introduction to F1 in 2016, Haas has struggled to keep up with the big boys. As we've touched on before in 2019, Haas fell victim to the rich energy scandal when they signed the energy drink brand as their title sponsorship, despite the company only having 770 bucks in their bank account. Check out the book Racing with Rich Energy to learn more about that. Fast forward to 2023, and Haas has found themselves implicated in another scandal I couldn't have ever imagined. Besides having an F1 team, Haas makes advanced precision CNC machines, which have applications in a variety of industrial processes across many industries. I actually grew up in a machine shop that used these very machines. They're so accurate, in fact, that the US military uses them as well. But the reason that Haas is under fire is because their CNC machines have fallen into the hands of Russian weapons manufacturers who have been found using the California-based company's machines to make guidance systems for anti-aircraft weapons despite the ongoing war in Ukraine. So how the hell did that happen? Before the US sanctions were placed on Russia in February of 2022, Haas, like many Western industrial companies, had a relationship with Russian buyers. Once sanctions went into place, Haas claimed that they cut ties with Russia. But what's suspicious here is that according to customs records reported by PBS, quote, 18 shipments were made to Russia directly from Haas, worth $2.8 million from March 4th through October of last year. Haas has strongly denied these allegations with a 12 paragraph statement that addressed a story to be false, stating explicitly that the quote, machines referenced in the story left the Haas factory 
prior to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. On the one hand, the Ukrainian Corruption Protection Agency presented evidence of transactions after the sanctions, and on the other hand, Haas is saying they didn't break any rules. Regardless of that, what we can say is that Haas CNC machines, or any CNC machines really, can be used in dangerous ways if they fall into the wrong hands. And the Ukrainian Corruption Prevention Agency agrees with that, and have also implicated other Red Bull F1 sponsors, DMG Mori and Siemens, as other precision machine tooling companies that are vital to the Russian war effort quote unquote. Yeah, so ranking Haas, this is, this, this, this is crazy. This sucks, this is, this is like the home team right here. Look, other companies have been caught breaking the sanctions with Russia. A lot of uh, companies and countries have been caught buying natural gas and oil from Russia, but it's strange that it's actually going the other way, like selling stuff to Russia. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's the worst so far actually very sketchy. So with all this shadiness happening, what is F1 actually doing about it? In 2019, the FIA, the governing body of F1, announced a cost cap for each team for the first time in F1 history. The cap was introduced to close the huge gap between the top teams and the underdogs and to address the recklessly extravagant image of F1. But how effective has it really been? In 2023, we know that the cap is set at around $135 million, plus a few million dollars to account for extra races this year and inflation. But that's not the whole picture. If we break down the cost cap, it includes the cost of the staff that builds, maintains, and races the cars, any equipment costs, spare tires, transport costs, and all the parts and electronics of the cars, except, and this is critical, the cost of the engine. F1 engines and teams like Mercedes have been the difference maker in their car success and have been rumored to cost anywhere from 10 to $16 million. To add further doubt to the cost cap, driver salaries and the wages of the three highest paid staff on each team are not included. So clearly there's still a lot of leeway in the governing of the money that's going into F1 team cars, drivers, and the executives. But. Are we really surprised at this point? Formula One is a playground for some of the world's wealthiest and most influential people to trade both legally and illegally in the global economy. We can only speculate the kinds of deals that are going on behind the scenes as the drivers take each lap. But what is clear is that this isn't new to the sport at all. With the sheer amount of money it takes to run an F1 team and the attraction of international brands trying to get in on the nearly $20 billion sport, it's unlikely that the involvement of shady sponsors and unethical money practices will change anytime soon. Perhaps the craziest part are the hints of this underbelly displayed in plain sight on the side of our favorite race cars. Big thank you to the Peterson Automotive Museum for letting us shoot down here. You can come see these cars for yourself. No more vault tour, you can just come right down here. It's super worth it. There's tons of amazing cars and they now have a awesome Porsche exhibit as well. Make sure you check that out. Um, we'll see you next time.